The 2020 Western Australian Architecture Awards are proudly supported by Bluescope, Brickworks, and Dulux, Lysart, Fielders, and Bondor, Built Environment Channel, Planned Cover, and Architecture Media, as well as Rondo, FMC HomeGuard, USG Borrow, Midland Brick, Mondo Luce, Living Edge, and Oztim. everyone and welcome to the 2020 Western Australian Architecture Awards live stream. My name is Viv O'Connell and it is my great pleasure to be your host once again as we celebrate architecture across the state. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners and custodians of land across Western Australia. I acknowledge the wisdom of Elders past and present and pay my respect to communities. Now, while we may not all be able to be gathered in Perth this evening, I can think of no better way than to begin this evening with a welcome to country from Matthew Maguire, Wajak Elder of the Nyungar Nation. Hello ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to Wajak country. It's my honour to stand here and welcome you to the land of the Wajak people at a time of the year we call Makuru. Ask my old people's spirits can be part of this day today with you that you have a wonderful day here and safe travels whilst here on Wajak country. I would like to share this song with you. This is a song that comes out of Kings Park. It songs of singing about driving away bad spirits. One day, Gamalana, one day, Gamalana, you go, one go, one Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see one another again later on then. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. Thank you, Matthew. Now, if the last few weeks have been anything to go by, as we've been streaming the awards announcements for the Australian Institute of Architects across the country, we're joined tonight by viewers not only in Western Australia, but across Australia and also overseas. So a very warm welcome to you all, and it's fantastic to be able to bring the work of the Western Australian members to a broader audience this year. I hope the celebrations are going well so far and will be going well into the night. Now we're very keen to see how you're celebrating this evening. So the WA chapter is running a best dressed Instagram competition during the show. Very simple to enter. All you need to do is glam up, theme up and dress for digital by taking a photo of yourself, your family or the people in your practice and using these tags just here. The chapter will announce the winner on Instagram at the end of the night and the winner could win one of these prizes right here. So, get those selfies happening. But now, let's get underway with a live cross to Western Australian President Peter Hobbs. Hello, Peter. How is it going there? Hello, everybody. Well, we're at one of the countless parties around uh, the West, West, West metropolitan area. I mean, we're not going to have a party. We're going to be partying tonight into the night, as you say. So, yep, we started. Excellent. Excellent. Well, look, thank you so much for joining us. And as I just mentioned in the intro there, we are joined by an audience well beyond the borders of Western Australia this evening. So it's great to be able to bring the work of the members to that broader audience this year. And I know that you've had a good look at all of this year's entrance. Is there anything you'd like to say about the contenders this year in the WA Awards? Well, look, I think this year the word unprecedented has been bandied around a lot. You know, we've had fires, we've had COVID, we've had all these challenges. But the thing which is not unprecedented is the quality of the work. And this is just the thing which astounds me year in, year in out. 
just how good our work is. Now, we've been talking a lot about sustainability in, and uh, there's not one architect I know practising who at their core doesn't uh, incorporate some idea of sustainability into their practice, whether it's either economic, environmental, social, but it underlies all of our work. And I just see that, think we see that really strongly this year, as in every year. Wonderful. Uh, the, the other thing we've had is that, look, we have had a recession and there's been a headwinds here for about the last two years. The award numbers were down. But what we've seen is the, the resourcefulness of the, of the responses it's just been great. So even small, modest projects are just done with such uh, exquisite quality. Fantastic. And do you have a message to the members watching this evening, Peter? Well, look, I think I just say that we're just a resilient bunch of buggers, aren't we? We, we sort of are the most underrated profession in the, uh, in the country. And we, we just contribute so much. And I've just found the way we've adapted really, really spectacular. I mean, just thinking about the awards, you know, we last year we would have been at the Optus Stadium, the home for Mighty Fremantle Dockers. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> put, my, put my head on. And, um, you know, and now we're sort of in... That was for Dave Hartree. Um, and now we've sort of been forced to adapt like this and um, we put the, the, the team put the awards together, the jury sort of collaborated. We've got some great sort of uh, footage coming out of those, those interviews. So this is going to be the new way we do things. I think we won't go back necessarily. So yeah, thank you to the members and thank you to all of the, uh, all of the staff too. Fantastic. And for people who are watching who aren't from the West, is there anything you'd like to say to sum up the profession in WA, Peter? Uh, well, look, I think we bat well above our weight. Uh, we're not a, you know, we're not a huge state, but we're a very diverse state. We sort of cover a huge geographical area and a huge climatic area. Um, and I think that there's just this, this thing that when you come from a smaller region, you just try really, really hard. Um, I think we are developing a very unique style of our own, which really responds to climate and to our environment. And so it's a special place. And I think that goes generally about um, all Australian architecture. I was thinking, what, what typifies Australian architecture? You know, because we talk about food and fusions of Asian and fusions of sort of a European. I think the thing about Australian architecture is it's very responsive to climate, uh, to environment. Um, and I think it's just got its very unique style. Fantastic. Um, well, so, yeah, so. well, we are looking forward to showing it to everyone who's watching tonight. So uh, thank you very much for joining us. And um, I do hope you enjoy the rest of the evening and the celebrations there. Thank you very much. <laughs> and thanks to all of you who put in the awards too, guys. Great work. Where the hell is everybody? Where can I get answer the phone? Hello. Where are you? Hello. You're watching the Australian Architecture Awards. Where? I'll be there in five. Thanks, Hames Charlie, and nice to see you again, Bill. I hope you found the rest of the team. Now, before we move on to the main awards announcements this evening, we have two important presentations to make. The first is the Architects Board of Western Australia Award, and it's my pleasure to hand over to the board chair, Isla McRobbie, to make the announcement. Thanks very much, Viv. As the chair of the Architects Board, I'm delighted to be here participating in the Institute's online awards event with the opportunity to say a few words. The role of the Architects Board at a very high level is centred around three key areas, accreditation of architecture schools, registration of architects and consumer protection. The composition of our board is then structured to complement these areas. The objective of the Board Award is to recognise architects registered in WA whose attitudes and personal contributions to the profession and the community have enhanced public confidence in the standing of the profession and or promoted public awareness of the profession. This award is specifically to recognise special endeavours outside of the normal business as usual activities of architects. For almost a decade, this architect has been an invaluable contributor to professional associations and committees, volunteering his time and making significant contrib contributions to advance the practice and professionalism of architecture. He has served on national education committees, practice committees, and has been a WA chapter councillor with the Australian Institute of Architects.
He willingly gives up his time to assist with jury roles, architecture school accreditation panels, and examination of new architecture registrants. The board considers he is a very worthy recipient of the board award, and our congratulations therefore go to Dean Wood. Thank you, Isla, and my thanks to the Architects Board of Western Australia. This award means a, a lot to me, and this is a very special moment uh, in my career. The circumstances of social distancing and COVID restraints uh, might seem strange, but don't detract from the significance of this event for me. As a migrant uh, to Western Australia, it means a great deal to have my contributions to the profession recognised in this way. I feel very fortunate in having um, found a vocation in architecture early in my life and in having had inspiring teachers, wonderful mentors and supportive colleagues all the way. And my thanks go to each of you. <clears throat> I've enjoyed studying and working in both Western Australia and uh, the United Kingdom. And I always think that we work best as architects when we work collaboratively, we share experiences, accept responsibilities and always act with integrity. So finally, uh, my thanks to those who nominated me for this award and uh, special thanks to those who've put up with me for the last 40 years at home. Thank you. Thanks, Isla, and congratulations, Dean. The next announcement is the WA Emerging Architect Prize, and the winner is considered for the national prize, which will be announced later in the year. You might remember that Kukami McPearcy took out last year's WA Emerging Architect Prize, and it's not so long ago that Nick Brunston won the national prize. A big shout out to you both if you're watching this evening, and I'm sure you are. The Emerging Architect Prize recognises an individual or a collaboration's contribution to architectural practice, education, design excellence, and community involvement, advancing the profession's role within the public arena. This year's jury was chaired by Peter Hobbs and he was joined by co-chair of WA Imagine, Renette Rue, and the 2019 winner, Kukami McPearcy. So, without any further ado, the winner of this year's Emerging Architect Prize is Sandy Angie. Graduating from the University of Western Australia in 2013, Sandy established her practice, Sandy Angie Architect, in 2016, with a focus on increased density, sustainability and affordability in residential architecture. Sandy's capacity to make architecture accessible and engaging is further demonstrated through her contribution to a range of publications. She's the editor of The Architect magazine and, since 2017, has written a monthly Meet the Architect column in the West Australian newspaper, showcasing local architects and exploring ideas around design quality and architecture with a wide audience. Congratulations, Sandy! And I am joined now by Sandy on Skype, but unfortunately we can't get the vision working, but we should be able to hear her. Hi, Sandy. Hi, it's funny. I can see myself, but no one can see me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank goodness we've just been able to show some images of you and, you know, work related to, or images related to your work as well. First of all, congratulations on receiving this prize. Can I ask, uh, what does this mean to you? Oh, I just want to say thank you to the Institute of Architects. It's such an honour to receive this award and be recognised by the architecture community for the work that I do. And um, you know, it's really been fun and rewarding working on all of those projects, the magazine, Meet the Architect and Historic Heart. And you know, I feel fortunate to be able to contribute to the community and promote West Australian architects and architecture. Wonderful. And of course, you're going to be going through for consideration for the National Prize later in the year, a very worthy contender for WA, which is fantastic. Um, is there anyone in particular that you'd like to acknowledge or thank, Sandy? Um, oh, I just, I guess everyone that I've worked with from university, I, um, I went back to study architecture as a mature age student. So it's been a long journey for me and there's been so many people along the way to get to this point. So yeah, so probably it'd be too hard to, to start naming, I think. Yeah. And um, can I ask where you're watching from tonight? Obviously, we can't see where you are, so it's a bit of a mystery for us here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm actually at home and I actually set up a nice background backdrop to my video and um, made sure my Skype was working, but I'm not very good at technical things, so I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> oh, well, look, that's quite all right. Maybe you can uh, take a selfie and post it with those tags we showed earlier and you might even win another prize tonight. Those bottles of wine look pretty good. Thank you. Oh, well, look, enjoy the rest of your night, Sandy. Thanks so much and congratulations once again.
See you later. Hi, we're Cameron Chisholm Nickel. And you're watching the Western Australian Architecture Awards. And now to the main awards categories. Each of the award and named award winners tonight will go through for consideration by the National Jury for a National Architecture Award later in the year. And a very important note for you watching this evening, if you receive a named award tonight and you've given us your Skype details, we will be putting a call through to you to have a live cross. So if you see a call come through, please do pick up as quickly as you can because we would love to have a chat with you. Now these awards are regarded as the most prestigious in the design and construction industry. Each of the categories has been assessed by a jury of peers and in fact this year 46 representatives of the profession served on the 14 category juries and I'll introduce them throughout the night. Their work was overseen by the WA Chair of Juries Suzanne Hunt who has sent through this message. Hello, I'm Susie Hunt from Suzanne Hunt Architect, your Chair of Juries. Congratulations to the many architects that entered, the worthy winners, and a big thank you to all the architects that volunteered as jurors this year. We couldn't do it without you. As a practicing architect here in Perth, I know how tough the market has been over the last few years, and that was before the COVID-19 pandemic. As your Chair of Juries, I am so incredibly proud of our local fraternity's resilience. These awards demonstrate the depth and breadth of our profession with exemplary projects and worthy winners. Congratulations to you all. Thanks, Suzanne. The first category this evening is Enduring Architecture, which celebrates buildings of outstanding merit that continue to be important as high quality works of architecture. And the WA members may recall last year's winner was Harry Seidler's QV1. Now the jurors for this year's award included Warren Kerr, and he was joined by Carolyn Marshall and David Karotkin. So without any further ado, they have awarded the Richard Roach Jewel Award for Enduring Architecture to Hackett Memorial Buildings by Rodney Alsop and Conrad Sace. For 88 years, Winthrop Hall, the Clock Tower and Great Gateway have played an important traditional role as the ceremonial hall and symbol of the university. Awarded the Royal Institute of British Architects Bronze Medal in 1931, a first for Western Australia, these iconic concrete and Donnybrook stone buildings by Rodney Alsop and Conrad Sace are a most worthy winner of the 2020 Enduring Architecture Award. The next two categories are Heritage and Small Project Architecture. And the Heritage category is supported by Rondo. Kaylee Highland has sent through this message. Hi everyone, it's great to be joining you this evening and we're very proud to be supporting the Heritage category. I'm looking forward to celebrating all the WA projects nominated and on behalf of Rondo, I'd like to wish all the entrants the very best of luck. Have a fantastic night. Now let's take a look at the nominees for the categories of Heritage and Small Project Architecture. Aquinas College Chapel by John Taylor Architect. The Melbourne Hotel by Buchan. Crown Perth Metropole Water Pump Upgrade by Mays Architects. Silver Lining by Studio Origami Architects, SOA. South Perth Foreshore Connect South Canopies by Iredell Pedersen Hook Architects with Blaze Laboratory and ETC. Wabi Sabi by MJA Studio and Wanju Ma by MJA Studio. Thanks Kaylee and Rondo. Kaylee was a guest juror on the Heritage Jury, which was chaired by Bruce Callow. They were joined by Heritage Architects Nerida Mordaunt and Brandon Prattley. And the jury has awarded one commendation and the named award. The commendation goes to the Melbourne Hotel by Buchan. The jury commends this project where new six level accommodation wraps around and bookends the original three story hotel on its prominent corner site. Congratulations Buchan. And 
the Margaret Pitt Morrison Award for Heritage goes to Aquinas College Chapel by John Taylor Architect. This project is an exemplar for heritage architectural practice. It seamlessly retains complete integrity with the original design of this acclaimed 20th century chapel, whilst adapting it to 21st century needs. The architect has avoided the temptation to impose a new architectural language, in preference to a subtle approach that infuses a deep appreciation and respect for the original chapel. Intrinsically, the place in its setting remains essentially unaltered and continues to play an important role in the heart of the college campus. Congratulations, John Taylor Architect. And I'm joined now by John Taylor. John, congratulations. Thank you very much, Viv, and good evening to everyone tuned into the awards. And uh, you are located in somewhere that looks very spectacular from where I'm standing anyway. Can you tell me where you are this evening? I'm in the southwest of WA, a very rural location, so I'm thrilled that the NBN's working for us at the moment, even with all the rain. That's pretty good, isn't it? We've certainly been testing everyone's internet connection over the last few weeks, so I'm glad we've been able to get through to you. Um, now, can I ask you to give us just a little bit of background to this in incredible project? Well, it's one of those really special ones that come around in a practitioner's uh, life just very, very occasionally. Um, I'm thrilled to win this Margaret Pitt Morrison Award because Margaret was the pioneering female architect in WA and I knew her in my student day, so it's very special. Uh, the folks at the college were a joy to work with. Um, my staff, Godleaf Wesley and Kylie Maxfield, were fabulous for their documentation skills. Um, so it's great to win. Thanks to everyone with the awards process and uh, it's a great celebration of the incredibly high standard of architecture that we're producing in this state as Peter Hobbs said. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Um, now, you've thanked a fair few people already. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say about the project? Uh, only that it was a special one, and it was great that we had such a thrilling result. Everyone was happy, a really nice result, and, and it exceeded everyone's expectations, which is always great when your clients come back with that satisfaction. Oh, well, that's wonderful. I do hope they're watching tonight. Uh, do you know if they are by any chance? I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> I hope so. Oh, terrific. Well, look, congratulations once again to you, your team, and of course, your clients as well. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the night. Thanks very much, Viv. Pleasure. Hi, I'm John Taylor. You're watching the 2020 WA Architecture Awards. Thanks, John, and congratulations once again. And now to small project architecture. The jurors included Matt Delroy Carr, Stephen Carrick and Catherine Ash. And they have awarded two commendations and the named award. The first commendation goes to Crown Perth Metropole Water Pump Upgrade by Mays Architects. The architects have created a singular concealing object that not only houses the functional elements of the brief, but also provides a distinct entry threshold and envelope to the back of house elements of the building. Congratulations, Mays Architects. A commendation also goes to Wonju Ma by MJA Studio. The jury commends this skillfully designed companion building for Kings Park volunteers. The simple form and material palette respects the natural environment and incorporates well-considered detailing, contributing to a refined design. Congratulations, MJA Studio. And the Ivan Ivanov Award for Small Project Architecture goes to South Perth Foreshore Connect South Canopies by Idel Pedersen Hook Architects with Place Laboratory and ETC. These delightful canopies bind together the narrative of the river, the high street, and the Perth Zoo through their figurative language. Although small in footprint, these structures are civic gestures and compelling components of the upgrade to this premier foreshore landscape. Playful and bright objects visible from afar, they add to the cultural artefacts of our evolving cityscape and mark a moment in our collective history in a most joyful way. Congratulations, Idel Pedersen Hook Architects with Place Laboratory and ETC. I'm joined now by the team led, I believe, by Adrian Idale. Adrian, is that you with that hat? 
Hi. Hi. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Um, well, firstly, can you give us a little bit of background? We'll start with the hats and then we'll talk about the project. How's that? Sorry, I, I could not hear a word of that because we were laughing too much. Oh, well, no, good on you. I'll say it again. Tell me a little bit firstly about your hats and then let's talk about the project. Oh, we're just going out in style. You know, this is the Melbourne Cup of Architecture, isn't it? It certainly you know, we're is. We're all wearing projects. Oh, that's great. Have you taken the selfie and used the hashtag so you can win the bottles of wine tonight? or? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I'm sure that makes Beata and Danielle very, very happy. Um, but down to business. Um, obviously, this is an incredible project. Can you give us a little bit of background about it? Oh, look, it's a project that started through the city of South Perth, really wanting to regenerate the precinct, basically. You know, the precinct's undergone massive change through a lot of new construction, and there was a sense that it needed a new identity. And the local residents, along with the local um, shop owners and retail businesses, all came and supported. It's a project we did with Place Laboratory and ETC and, and many other consultants. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a really fascinating one to be part of because it was a small project but had really high expectations on what it could do to an entire precinct. Fantastic. And it looks as though the community has certainly embraced it and it's made a tremendous impact in that part of Perth. Um, is there anything that you'd like to say about, you know, how it feels to work on a project of this kind of scale? Uh, look, it's, it's amazing to work on anything that is in the public realm because it has such a big influence on the way people use and interact with public space. You know, it, it impacts on a lot of people. And that's what's, you know, and as much as it is a small project, um, it, it does have a lasting impression on people. And, and it's not just the local residents, it's also the tourists and it's also other people in Western Australia that come to visit and to move up to Perth Zoo. So it's got a really strong connection to another project that we've been working on and with the Perth Zoo for 21 years. So it's really, really special for us. Fantastic. And is there anyone in particular you'd like to acknowledge? It looks as though it was a truly collaborative team effort. Absolutely. First of all, the City of South Perth for great support and the residents and, and the local community um, and, all, and all the businesses. Um, you know, you can't do architecture like this without having great support. And Place Laboratory were amazing to work with and ETC and Kim Velos from our office for, you know, a massive effort <laughs> on this and everyone else that's worked with us. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that never get acknowledged in these projects and they really deserve to be. Oh, fantastic. Well, look, congratulations once again to you, the team, and obviously the clients as well. Um, it looks like you're having a great time already, but I hope you continue to throughout the night. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. It's Drew here from Dabble. We are watching the West Australian Architecture Awards. Thanks, Dabble, and great dogs. The next category is Educational Architecture, supported by FMC Home Guard, and Colm McCormack has sent through this message. Hi everyone, it's great to be joining you this evening. We're really proud to be one of the supporting sponsors again of the awards this year. And on behalf of FMC Home Guard, I'd like to wish all the entries the best of luck. Now let's take a look at the 11 entries in this year's Educational Architecture Award. Alchemos College, Stage 1, by Taylor Robinson, Cheney Broderick. Bob Hawke College, Stage 1, by Bateman and TNZ Architects, Joint Venture. Cape Naturalist College, Stage 2, by TAG Architects, with Gary Holland, Architect. City Beach Residential College, by Iredale Pedersen Hook Architects. Corpus Christi College Theatre by EIW Architects. Curtin University Midland Campus by Lyons with Silver Thomas Hanley. Edith Cowan University Science Building and PC2 Laboratory by Silver Thomas Hanley. Melville Senior High School Theatre by Cox Architecture. Mother Teresa Catholic College, Stage 3, by Parry and Rosenthal Architects. North Shore Christian Grammar School, by Taylor Robinson and Cheney Broderick. And UFCC Year 7 Transition Centre and Science Precinct, by DWA Architects. 
And Colm was a member of this jury, which was chaired by Ingrid Haas, and their fellow jurors were Will Thompson, Sarah McGann, and graduate guest juror Deanne Nelson. And they have awarded one commendation, one award, and the named award. The commendation goes to North Shore Christian Grammar School by Taylor Robinson Cheney Broderick. The jury commends this project for its vision and realisation of inquisitive and playful architecture, despite a featureless site context. The internal learning streetscape is a joyous environment, bright and playful, carefully detailed and articulated. Congratulations, Taylor Robinson Cheney Broderick. The award goes to City Beach Residential College by Iredell Pedersen Hook Architects. The jury describes this project as an exquisite example of architecture, defined through careful consideration of place, site and context. As a facility with little precedent, the architects have successfully defined a new type of student accommodation. It maintains the need for safety and surveillance whilst feeling homely and livable. Congratulations, Idel Pedersen Hook. And the highest honour in this category, the Hilson Beasley Award for Educational Architecture, goes to Curtin University Midland Campus by Lyons with Silver Thomas Hanley. Successfully weaving a bold new campus architecture into the fabric of an historical town centre and with deep connection to Indigenous culture and place, this new health sciences facility defines a benchmark for educational architecture in Western Australia. Embracing environmental and cultural sustainability, the architecture, landscaping and artwork are the result of successful collaboration between the architects, university and local Indigenous community, integrating language and culture to create a project that is unmistakably West Australian, unmistakably Midland and unmistakably Curtin. Congratulations, Lions with Silver Thomas Hanley. And I'm joined now by James Wilson. Hi, James. How's it going? Oh, hi. Fantastic. Thank you. We're, we're absolutely thrilled to, uh, to get this award. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's a real, it's a real good, good news story this time, really. Fantastic. And can I ask where you're watching from this evening, James? This is uh, my house in, in Melbourne. I've got my, oh, I'm going to show you now. I've got my young family. Oh, fantastic. The couch are here at home. And uh, I'm obviously doing this on behalf of our project team who are all across Melbourne at the moment and our, and our fantastic collaborators, Silver Thomas Hanley, who are over here in Perth as well, so. Wonderful, and I know from the jury citation that this is obviously a highly collaborative project. Um, would you like to just run us through some of the key teams who are involved in creating such a fantastic outcome? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, congratulations to Curtin University who are just fantastic at uh, really pushing the innovation and collaboration across this project. It was a funded project for Curtin University for a new campus in a location they weren't necessarily familiar with. So it really had to have a lot of collaborators um, really involved in the project to make it a community facility and not just an educational one. So, you know, we really thank uh, Marion Kickett and the, uh, the Wadjuk people who were really integrated into the process and the artwork in the building. Our collaborators, Silver Thomas Hanley, but also the neighbours and John of God and uh, even the WA Police. Everyone was really integrated into making this project uh, a complete success for the place, because it really is an off-campus location. And um, education is obviously all about, you know, young people learning, and I can see some of them in the, the camera there. Hi, guys. <laughs> Feel free to get in the shot. That's right. You're on TV. Brilliant. Um, what is it that you love about working in architectural education projects? Oh, I think, you know, academics and educators are always looking to innovate widely because, uh, you know, that's the future of uh, learning. It's the future of where we get new ideas from. So new ideas is the space we like to be in. It's fantastic to work with a really progressive university who are really willing to work with narrative and ideas and then to work with these educators who really wanted to get in a facility which uh, wanted to further health science education and, and the facility without going into detail really does something quite different uh, for the health sciences. Oh, wonderful. Well, look, congratulations once again to you, the team, the clients, obviously, as well, and everyone who collaborated, collaborated on this project. And um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the night with the family there. Will do. Thank you very, very much. Hi, we're MDC Architects, and you're watching the WA Architecture Awards. And now to commercial architecture, supported by USG Borel. And Adam Johnson-Kane has this message for tonight's entrance. 
Hi, it's Adam JK from USG Borrow here. I hope everybody's keeping well during the current crisis. Uh, we are here for the WA Chapter Awards. This is the fourth consecutive year that USG Borrow have sponsored the Ross Chisholm and Gill Nickel Commercial Award. And it's a fantastic process and something that I personally get a lot of pleasure out of. Uh, the standard and quality of the entries has been as high as ever. Uh, and we're really looking forward to reviewing those now. So without further ado, let's have a look at the nominees. 125 Murray Street by Cox Architecture. Juniper Crystal Halliday by TNZ Architects. And The Amberton by Mode. Thanks, Adam. And Adam served on this jury, which was chaired by Charmaine Woods, and they were joined in their deliberations by Mimi Cho and Michael Jorgensen. So, the Commercial Architecture Jury has awarded two commendations and the named award. The first commendation goes to The Amberton by Mode. The Amberton is an example of robust, understated West Australian functionalism, which considers future sea level rise and dune erosion. Embraced by the local community, the jury commends Mode on a design built for today with a vision for tomorrow. Congratulations, Mode! And a commendation is also awarded to Juniper Crystal Halliday by TNZ Architects. This development has struck a delicate balance in its pursuit away from the institutional, and the jury commends the architects for the positive contribution to the lives of the residents and their families. Congratulations, TNZ Architects. And the highest honour in this category, the Ross Chisholm and Gil Nickel Award for Commercial Architecture goes to 125 Murray Street by Cox Architecture. The detailed and considered refurbishment of 125 Murray Street, a once tired building in the eastern end of Perth, has breathed new life into the fabric and flow of this commercial space. Added floor area, increased volume and generous light penetration through significant facade changes and a wonderful skylight all contribute to the restrained yet delightful contemporary office spaces. This is a strong statement in the value of an architectural vision for a space and well delivered. Congratulations, Cox Architecture. And I'm joined now by Brett White from Cox. Hi, Brett. Congratulations to you and the team. Oh, thank you very much. And uh, do you have the team around you there? You're looking a little solitary, more solitary no, than the I, others. I, I am isolated. Uh, the ah. team is uh, upstairs uh, as we speak. Fantastic. And um, this is obviously an exceptional project. Can you give us a little bit of background to this one? Uh, yes, it is. It's about a, a really about a uh, rediscovering and repurposing a, a building uh, that is quite old and uh, I guess in a sense touching and uh, the eastern fabric of the city and making it, uh, I guess, more accessible and, and more usable. Fantastic. And uh, anyone in particular that you'd like to acknowledge who was involved in the project? Uh, well, first of all, uh, it would be great to acknowledge the, uh, the judges. Uh, you know, we're quite humbled to receive such an award. Um, also, I'd like to acknowledge the other participants because really um, they also made a value contribution to the built environment. Um, the Cox team really uh, comprises a number of people, like all uh, architectural projects, and uh, you know they, it consisted of uh, Steve Woodland and Greg Howlett, uh, John Lee uh, as the project architect, uh, Dominic Tiller, uh, Jonathan Chong, and Edwin T. All combined together, and really, I guess this project's about you know teamwork and commitment, and I guess their personal and uh, professional integrity. Fantastic. And I think, I, I'm sorry, can I just buddy? I think there's really obviously the most important thing to think is um, obviously the client, uh, Jared and Robert O'Brien from Silverleaf. I mean, it, it's a really, um, it's a big thank you for their passion about quality architecture, but also, also their respect and their value that they have for the architectural profession. Mm. And can I ask what does it mean to you, you the practice and also the clients to be recognised with an award of this significance? Oh, listen, these kind of projects are, are kind of bravery uh, projects. Um, so it, it, it really reinforces the client's um, integrity and, and bravery to take on such a challenging project. 
And it's very important for us as, a, as, a, as an architectural profession in working with Perth to, to be able to kind of explore our skills, to be able to repurpose and rediscover older buildings, which is really, a, a, you know, um, an important both environmentally but also socially. Fantastic. Well, look, congratulations once again to you, the clients, the team, everyone who was involved, and I do hope you enjoy the rest of the night. Thank you very much. And we will be back very shortly after these few messages from the awards sponsors. Hi, I'm Sue. I'm from USG Borrell. We're about to unveil Ensemble, our first acoustical monolithic plasterboard ceiling system at Chancery House in Perth. So when we got onto Ensemble and realised that the entire surface had the acoustic properties and then we could apply a finished product over everything that's up there to make it uniform, it fitted the build perfectly. In a space like this you would expect to have all sorts of problems with reverberation and it seemed to just drink it up in an appropriate way and it does it just beautifully. I am so impressed. When specifying Rondo products, you have access to expert design advice from our own technical sales and professional engineers. Our team of engineers are all fully qualified and experienced in cold formed steel design, as well as Australian and international standards. This includes seismic, acoustic and fire rated design, external walls and soffit framing, walls and ceilings subject to internal pressures. Our website also provides specification templates, white papers and CAD files to download or submit technical inquiries and register to CPD presentations. That's why we're behind the best buildings. Dulux Wash and Wear for a superior washable finish. If it's worth doing, it's worth Dulux. The next category is Residential Architecture Multiple Housing, supported by the Institute's major national partner, Dulux, and Alex Teed has sent through this message. Hi everyone, great to be joining you this evening. I hope you're all having a wonderful time. Uh, at Dulux, we're incredibly proud to be able to continue our support of the architectural community, both nationally and locally here in WA. Uh, there were some outstanding entrants in this category and it's been a privilege having the opportunity to review them all. So let's take a look at the nominees. 13 on Carrington by MDC Architects. Australis at Rossmoyne Waters by Haynes Charlie. Botanical by Hillam Architects. Element 27, also by Hillam Architects. Essence by Haynes Charlie. M28 by Cameron Chisholm Nickel with David Barr Architect. Stock Road Grouped Housing by MJA Studio. The Crest by Woods Baggett. Vantage by Hillam Architects. Verdant Apartments by MJA Studio and Vic Quarter by Hillam Architects. Alex was one of the jurors for this category which was chaired by David McLaughlin and their fellow jurors were Dimity Walker and Greg Howlett and they have awarded one commendation, two awards and the named award in this category. 
The commendation goes to Element 27 by Hillam. This is the first purpose-built, built-to-rent apartment development in Perth. The jury commends the architects for this high-quality building, an interesting and attractive composition, which integrates well in its pedestrian and landscape setting. Congratulations, Hillam! And the first award for residential architecture multiple housing goes to Stock Road Grouped Housing by MJA Studio. This project is confident and adept, with a sense of an underlying architectural idea informing the design, from planning through to detailing, interior design and finishes. MJA has successfully departed from the typical look, feel and function of the familiar townhouses in triplex form typology and achieved a distinct built outcome on a tight budget. Congratulations MJA Studio! And the second award goes to The Crest by Woods Baggett. This ambitious undertaking has resulted in a well-executed contemporary apartment building, which makes the most of its opportunity, provides an appropriate response to the existing transitional context, and sets a productive pattern for the further development of this precinct. The jury commends the architects for delivering an impressive piece of architecture. Congratulations, Woods Baggett. And the highest honour in this category, the Harold Krantz Award for Residential Architecture Multiple Housing goes to Verdant Apartments by MJA Studio. In an apartment market where saleability is governed by finishes, inclusions, features and branding, MJA Studio's aspirations in Verdant go beyond commercial feasibility and market appeal to create an apartment tower of enduring architectural quality. Verdant is a well-executed, disciplined, thoughtful and affordable apartment development designed to appeal to younger and more forward-thinking occupants. It sets a new standard in Perth and will contribute to improving design as well as community perception and attitude to high-density apartment living. Congratulations, MJA Studio. And I'm joined now by Jimmy Thompson from MJA and it looks like the entire practice. Am I right, Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> uh, well, over to you. Can you tell us a little bit about what does it mean to the team to be recognised for this award tonight? Uh, absolutely. Huge honour uh, up against some really amazing competition and just really humbled that uh, we've been recognised again by the Institute and their sponsors. So awesome. Absolutely awesome. Fantastic. And um, the jury was obviously very impressed with this project. It's more than just, you know, multiple housing. It looks as though it's contributed to the community as well. What does it feel like to work on a project like this? Uh, look, I mean, the dance in a really transitional neighbourhood. There is in a part of the city that had never been known for, for high density or any sort of residential occupation. So part of a string of projects along that street, which will change the character over time. Um, and just provide a bit more vibrancy into the inner city, which is really important. And for us, being able to do that at sort of a really affordable level, but provide really high amenity um, was a sort of hallmark of the project. It was trying to get the best possible living environments for future residents uh, at a reduced kind of cost. Fantastic. And it sounds as though you had an inspired client. Um, is there anything that you'd like to say about them? Absolutely. Always like to thank uh, Sterling Capital. They've uh, supported us for a long time and they support really good architectural outcomes and you know they also believe in sustainability and, and the role it can play in um, living environments so we really love working with them um, we've worked with them for a long time and we hope to do so more so in the future. Excellent and I have to say it's not often that I'm able to see you guys in the preview monitor or see a practice receiving two awards in one category so congratulations also for the uh, Stock Road grouped housing project as well. Would you like to say a few words about that while I've got you here? Uh, absolutely I mean that was a case study for doing sort of medium density better in the suburbs um, you know there's so much bad triple X housing throughout and everything that the government's trying to do with their design WA2 um, that's what this project was it was trying to address and that's what it really achieved and we're, we're really happy um, to be awarded for that as well. Love right. that project. Oh, excellent. Well, uh, it looks like the party's already well underway where you guys are, so I hope it continues well into the evening. Congratulations once again, guys. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. <laughs>
Thanks for the message, MJA. Love the butter paper. The next category is Urban Design, supported by Midland Brick. And Clive Bergamashi has sent through this message. Hello and welcome to the Urban Design category. It's a pleasure to be joining you this evening. On behalf of everyone at Midland Brick, we're proud to be associated with the AIA and we look forward to continued partnership and support. Good luck to all the entrants. Now let's take a look at the nominees. Curtin Bicycle Hub by Coniglio Ainsworth Architects and Place Laboratory with Curtin University. Curtin University Midland Campus by Lyons with Silver Thomas Hanley. QV1 Plaza Redevelopment by Hassel. Rain Square Redevelopment by Taylor Robinson, Cheney Broderick. Shire of Katanning Administration and Civic Building by I2C Architects. Swan Care New Leisure Precinct by Iredale Pedersen Hook Architects. And The Rocks Laneway by Taylor Robinson, Cheney Broderick with UDLA. And Clive was part of this jury, which was chaired by Simon Venturi. And they were joined in their deliberations by Deborah Benet, Anastarios Kokos, and graduate guest juror Georgina Hall. And they have awarded one commendation, one award, and the named award. The commendation goes to Curtin Bicycle Hub by Coniglio Ainsworth Architects and Place Laboratory with Curtin University. The jury commends this project for not only strengthening the university's cycling infrastructure network, but also for engaging with and drawing the wider community onto the university's site. Congratulations to the team. The award for urban design goes to Swan Care New Leisure Precinct by Iredale Pedersen Hook Architects. This precinct displays a level of thoughtfulness and innovation rarely achieved within the aged care typology. The result of rigorous contextual analysis, the project's overall ambition is to promote positive mental health benefits for both residents and visitors alike through a carefully considered architectural response. Congratulations once again to the project team. And the John Septimus Rowe Award for Urban Design goes to The Rocks Laneway by Taylor Robinson Cheney Broderick with UDLA. Establishing a new linear pathway through Geraldton city centre, the Rocks Laneway uses a series of subtle strategic interventions to deliver an outcome that plays a strong role in revitalising the CBD. Adaptive reuse of buildings, recycling of materials and the use of an expansive Trevor Richards public artwork all display a low-cost inventive approach in this highly successful project, which delivers a meaningful outcome for the local community. Congratulations, Taylor Robinson Cheney Broderick with UDLA. And we've just been trying to put a call through to Fred Cheney and the team, but unfortunately it doesn't look like we're able to make it. So look, congratulations once again on such a great achievement, guys. I hope you're having a great night. Hi, we are Carrie and Pulsner's Architects. And you're watching the West Australian Architecture Awards. <laughs> nice work, Carrier and Postmas. The next category is Residential Architecture Alterations and Additions. Let's take a look at the nominees. Magnolia Residence by Chindazi Architects. Marine by David Barr Architects. Marine House by Chindazi Architects. Megalong by MDC Architects. Pericles House by Steelhouse Architecture. Reed House by Beth George Architect. Rosalie Street by Clopper and Davis Architects and South Terrace Mezzanine House by Philip Stedge School Architecture. This jury was chaired by Simon Pendle and his fellow jurors were Yun Ni Chong and Maxine Canning. 
and they have awarded one commendation, one award, and the named award. The commendation goes to Megalong by MDC Architects. Within a most frugal budget, the architect has achieved a commendable result by astutely tweaking the original building. The carefully curated sequence of adaptations pulls the project together into a single, staged and cohesive whole. Congratulations, MDC Architects. And the award goes to... Marine by David Barr Architects. Marine is a carefully made project which wedges itself between two existing cottages on a modest street of traditional houses in coastal South Fremantle. It uses a subtle material palette and is carefully scaled to its setting while borrowing landscapes in the near and long distance to make an exemplary interior. Congratulations, David Barr Architects. And the highest honour in this category, the Peter Oveman Award for Residential Architecture Alterations and Additions goes to Reed House by Beth George Architect. Reed House is a highly considered addition to an existing house built in 1908. The project explores ideas of memory and interpretation through a series of thoughtful interventions and new additions, positioned sensitively to retain the dignity of the existing house while simultaneously asserting itself through a robust material palette and sculptural monolithic forms. Integration of the structural and landscape design is significant to the project's success and a sense of play operates within the interior of this beautifully crafted family home. Congratulations, Beth George Architect. And Beth joins me now. Beth, congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, can I ask, how does it feel to uh, receive this accolade? Oh, it, it feels um, incredible, wonderful. I'm, I'm, I feel absolutely honoured and it's a very strange moment for me because I've just arrived back in WA from New South Wales, which means I'm actually quarantining and I'm doing that from Muckinburra. So I'm all dressed up for the kangaroos right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you poor thing. How many more days do you have in quarantine? This is day two, so 12. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, look, I'm glad we could lighten it a little bit with, you know, um, being able to bestow this honour upon you. Um, now, Beth, for those who aren't as familiar with your practice as some of the WA might, members might already be, can you give us a bit of context as to where this project sits within your work? Um, <clears throat> so I've been practising in various guises for a number of years, but... Um, I'm an academic as well, and so this was actually my first project as a sole practitioner and a registered architect. So, um, yeah, I can't tell you how much of an honour it is in a in a normal context, but in that context, it's it's really a, a marvellous thing for me. That's wonderful. The bar has certainly been set very high for your future work now. So uh, <laughs> a lot of expectations following you. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what you enjoyed most about working on this project? Um, well, it was a really special project to me and really, I think, um, the brief of a lifetime because it was um, the clients are my sister and my brother-in-law and the house is for them and their four daughters. So really, I think that their trust was the real foundation of the project. And it was a really incredible experience to um, work with them and give them a, a gift. <laughs> well, that's really wonderful. Are they watching tonight, do you know? Um, yep, yeah, they will be somewhere in, uh, in well, within the house, <laughs> I'd say. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, okay, clients, if you're watching, do take a selfie and uh, post it using the requisite tags. Um, I think that that would be a very fitting thing <laughs> to celebrate this remarkable achievement. Um, Beth, is there anything else that you'd like to say? Oh, I'd just like to say a big thank you to, um, to the builder, Alan Pope, and his team, they really worked on the house as though it was their own. And also to Christina Nicholson from Bankshire and Lime, who nailed the landscape brief. So um, <clears throat> it wouldn't have been what it, is, what, it, what it is as a project if it wasn't for those guys. Um, and it was just a 
fantastic experience. I couldn't be more honoured in being recognised in this way. So thank you to the Institute and to the jury very much. Well, wonderful. And uh, look, congratulations once again, Beth. Um, good luck with your final 12 days. I think it must be in quarantine. And I, <laughs> I do hope you enjoy the rest of the night. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> And that is a very impressive wave. Thank you, Woods Baggett. The next category is interior architecture. Let's take a look at the nominations. 125 Murray Street by Cox Architecture. 432 Murray Street, also by Cox Architecture. Architects Office Refurbishment by Parry and Rosenthal Architects. Campus Perth by Woods Baggett. Curtin University Midland Campus by Lyons with Silver Thomas Hanley. Melville Senior High School Theatre by Cox Architecture. And North Perth House by Nick Brunston. The Interior Architecture Jury included Neil County as Chair, as well as Diane Smith and Rebecca Stuber. And they have awarded one award and the named award. The award goes to North Perth House by Nick Brunston. This project delivers a series of contrasts in volume, areas of light and dark, and the warmth of the timber finishes. This is a simple yet sophisticated living environment in which the building's concrete and timber structure remains exposed and is celebrated. Congratulations, Nick Brunston. And the highest honour in this category, the Julius Ellisher Award for Interior Architecture, goes to Curtin University Midland Campus by Lyons with Silver Thomas Hanley. The building's interiors strike the right balance between the institutional requirements of the university while bringing a sense of joy to the students' everyday experiences. Design concept and process was strongly informed by local Indigenous groups and connection to local historical context. Sensitive carving out of a simple exterior form translates to the interior, where it enhances permeability highlights the activity within areas of interior circulation and enlivens student experiences. Congratulations, Lyons with Silver Thomas Hanley. And James Wilson from Lyons joins me once again. It's only a few Hello categories again. since we last chatted. <laughs> Congratulations. That's right, that's right. Thank you very much. Again, we're just so um, overwhelmed. It's really fantastic and we just want to thank the jury for their you know, they're really getting into the project and letting us really explain the full extent of what we're trying to do and, and getting right into it, especially in the circumstances of not being able to go inside the building, which is really hard. So thank you. Well, that's right. Now, we spoke a little bit about sort of the educational attributes of the building a little earlier. Is there anything you'd, you'd like to discuss in relation to the interiors in particular? Yeah, we had, we had a lot of, um, I'd say, fun with brickwork and the craftsmanship of brickwork and raw materials. So a lot of the interiors were, you know, using sort of brickwork in really different ways in sort of almost gravity-defying ways and also bringing that rawness inside. And a lot of the interiors, again, was done in consultation with the, um, again, thank you to the Centre of Aboriginal Studies at Curtin University with uh, Marion Kickett. And they really got involved with the, you know, the flora and fauna and the sort of thematics going through the building. And it just turned out to be a fantastic result. And I should give a good shout out to um, a very involved client, Sir McDonald and Amanda Christou, who really pushed us to really um, to really further all the ideas we're interested in throughout the project. So it really was uh, fantastically collaborative with our client. Oh, that is absolutely wonderful. I, I think the clients might be watching tonight. I hope they are. Um, and someone who is watching tonight are your kids here. Um, I need to ask, yes. any budding architects there? <laughs> No, I don't know about architects, but definitely illustrators and all the things that kids are into, but not architects just yet. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Oh, well, uh, but I did want to say thank you also to, to Silver Thomas Hanley again. Um, you know, again, I know you've filmed me into one place, but again, we couldn't have done with, without them. Fantastic. Yeah, a very big shout out to the team at Silver Thomas Hanley who are watching tonight. And look, congratulations to you all once again on a fantastic outcome. I hope you enjoy the rest of the night. <laughs>
Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Say bye. And we will be back very, very shortly after these messages from the award sponsors. When it's time to build, build on quality that's proven in Australia's harsh environment. Build on Lysart steel roofing and walling. Style. Experience. Excellence. You have it all when you choose Lysart steel roofing and walling. Insist on the best. Insist on Lysart. One thing I really like about Living Edge is the fact that they've been around for a long time. It means that there is a great service behind the company. We sometimes take back furniture that we've bought and have that recovered back in the original fabrics, done in the proper way. And it's quite nice knowing that that level of service exists. It's unusual in the furniture industry where a lot of people do disposable furniture. Viewing lighting fixtures in a showroom can only take you so far as to appreciate the capabilities and features of a lighting product. Featuring them in a showroom doesn't always highlight their full capability. Mondalucci created the Living Showroom as a practical guide to some of our lighting installations throughout the Perth metropolitan and regional areas. The Living Showroom provides those who enjoy fine architecture and design the opportunity to view examples of light in action in our purpose-built environment. And now to the Mondeluce Architectural Lighting Award. Here's a few words from Jerry DeWind. Hello everyone. Mondalucci has been a long-standing sponsor of the WA Architecture Awards and we're proud to be back again to sponsor the 2020 WA Lighting Award. It's a very strong field of contenders this year. Let's see who is in the running for the awards. Botanical by Hillam Architects. Vantage by Hillam Architects. 125 Murray Street by Cox Architecture. Corpus Christi College Theatre by EIW Architects. South Terrace Mezzanine House by Philip Stedge School Architecture. Jubilee Crescent by Bannum Architects. Swanbourne Street by Sorensen Architects. Swan Care New Leisure Precinct by Iredale Pedersen Hook Architects. South Perth Foreshore Connect South Canopies by Iredale Pedersen Hook Architects with Blaise Laboratory and ETC. Pingley Recreation and Cultural Centre by Iredale Pedersen Hook Architects with Advanced Timber Concept Studio. And UFCC Year 7 Transition Centre and Science Precinct by DWA Architects. Thanks, Jerry, and to Mondaluce for your long standing support of this award. The jury this year included Michael Lister as the invited client juror, Colin Armstrong was jury chair, and their fellow jurors were Jacinta Walker and Kim McCormack. And they have awarded three commendations and the award. The first commendation goes to Swan Care New Leisure Precinct by Iredale Pedersen Hook Architects. The second commendation goes to South Perth Foreshore Connect South Canopies by Iredell Pedersen Hook Architects with Place Laboratories and ETC. And a commendation is also awarded to 125 Murray Street by Cox Architecture. And the Mondeluce Award goes to South Terrace Mezzanine House by Phillips Stedge School Architecture. The jury was impressed with the subtlety and elegance in the use of lighting to enhance a small and enclosed interior to achieve an excellent architectural result. Detailed design solutions include the use of steel grid mesh flooring to allow natural light to descend to the lower floor and the concealing of light fixtures from direct view to create a veiled atmosphere. Surfaces appear to be permeable or translucent 
and distance is questionable. An aura emphasised by the limited material palette and the strategic use of pale colours and whites. Congratulations, Philip Stetschkel Architecture. And I'm joined now by Philip and uh, part of the team. Am I right, Philip? Congratulations. Yes. Hi. <laughs> Thanks very much. This is fantastic. Um, <laughs> this is all quite, quite unusual, this uh, format. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is, isn't it? I'm so glad I've got a preview monitor so I can see what's going on. But uh, I understand we caught you on the hop a little bit. You weren't expecting a call. <laughs> No, it was, it was uh, yeah, we were probably a bit disor disorganised, <laughs> but it's fantastic nevertheless, uh, a great honour. Well, wonderful, and congratulations. This looks like an absolutely extraordinary project. The jury were clearly impressed. Our three commendations were given in this category, and your project won the award. Uh, but can you give us a little bit of background as to the, what the project involved? Um, yeah, well, I mean, I think the project was very much centred around the clients. Um, uh, which we sort of explained to the jury that they're very, they're, they're quite eccentric people. So we wanted the, I guess their their home to be quite, um, uh, I guess a backdrop to that to to the the colourful life, the colour they bring to the to the um, to their home. I guess. Mm. Um, yeah. When I the first meeting I had with Darren, uh, he he sort of turned up, or I visited him at his home, and he had a very like a mustard suit on, uh, both jacket and and pants, and it left an impression. So. Uh, yeah. Wonderful. And uh, how do the clients enjoy living in the home? Yeah, no, look, they, they really enjoy it. They're a professional couple. They, they spend a lot of time working. So uh, hence the, the, the sort of focus on the home uh, office. Mm. And do you know mm. if they're uh, watching this evening? Uh, look, I, I don't think I was organised enough to sort of tell them, but uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll certainly, uh, you know, sort of send them a, a link or, or something. <laughs> Well, they will be able to catch up tomorrow, so it's all good. <laughs> oh, good, oh, good. That, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Oh, terrific. And uh, would you like to introduce who you're with there, Philip? Yes, yeah, so, so Yang Yang Lee is the project architect. He's uh, very much sort of pivotal and, and central to the, the project. And Louise Allen, uh, she's one of our team members uh, in Perth uh, here as well. Oh, wonderful. Well, congratulations to you all on a well-deserved achievement, and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the night. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you, Hassel. And now to Sustainable Architecture, supported by Living Edge, and Eugene Hooks has sent through this message. Hi everyone, I hope you're enjoying this evening. For us at Living Edge, sustainability is more than just a word. It is built into everything that we do. We established our sustainability program in 2008, called Living On, and I'm proud to say that we have achieved carbon neutrality in our operation for two and a half years. We are honoured to partner with this award where we celebrate those that push beyond the requirements of regulation and the industry norms to deliver more considered and meaningful outcomes. Now let's take a look at the shortlist for sustainable architecture. St Francis Chapel and Mausoleum by Slaven Architects. Curtin University Midland Campus by Lyons with Silver Thomas Hanley. Pingley Recreation and Cultural Centre by Iredale Pedersen Hook Architects with Advanced Timber Concept Studio. RZB House by Carrier and Posthumus Architects. Torren Street House by Officer Woods Architects. And The Rocks Laneway by Taylor Robinson, Cheney Broderick with UDLA. And Eugene served on this jury, which was chaired by Andrew Tang Smith. And their fellow jurors were Michelle Blakely and Daniela Simon. And the jury has given one award and the named award in this category. The award goes to RZB House by Carrier and Postmus Architects. This robust example of sustainable design meets the aspirations of the complex brief in an exceptional way. 
it has surpassed expectations of solar passive design principles and merits congratulations for its exploration of design, rainwater harvesting, active landscaping and allowing for future enhancements of natural energy sources. Congratulations Carrier and Postmus Architects. And the highest honour in this category, the Wallace Greenham Award for Sustainable Architecture goes to Pingley Recreation and Cultural Centre by Iredale Pedersen Hook Architects with Advanced Timber Concept Studio. This vibrant addition to the local public infrastructure has undoubtedly enhanced civic pride and offers great potential for expansion. The architects have demonstrated how timber construction, rather than more traditional use of steel and concrete, can excel both aesthetically and in providing natural shading, lighting and ventilation through the generous veranda. The jury considers that the success of this project will be proven in its creation of a popular new attraction, a stepping stone for additional cultural events. Congratulations, Iredale Pedersen Hook Architects with Advanced Timber Concept Studio. And I'm joined by Adrian and the team once again. Congratulations, the second named award of the evening. An extraordinary achievement. How does it feel? Amazing, actually. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you're allowed to cheer. Come on. <laughs> um, now, for the audience watching who um, aren't from Western Australia, can you paint a little bit of uh, context as to the location of this project for us, please? Well, it's about uh, two hours southeast of Perth. Technically, it's remote, um, which is one of the reasons why it's a timber building and it's a prefabricated building. Uh, it's uh, a shire where every inhabitant belongs to six different sporting clubs. So sports is a major event in the city, in the town, I mean, in the shire. Um, and uh, I guess that's kind of the beginning of the story. We're bringing a whole lot of diff disparate sporting clubs together in one um, kind of comprehensive project. Excellent. And um, I think also over to you. <laughs> oh, I, I, one of the amazing things is that the Shire decided to do a, a timber building rather than the conventional steel or concrete building. And so um, the Shire were very bravely um, led by Patrick um, to look at different timber buildings around Australia and internationally and decided that they look at a new timber construction for the facility, which is the largest timber building built in Western Australia since World War II. And we actually tracked, um, we found logs in an old coop of yellow stringy bark, which isn't a West Australian timber, it's a Victorian timber grown in um, near Mandramup. And we harvested a thousand tonnes of saw logs and turned that into about 350 cubic metres of timber and used it on the building. So it's incredible use of sustainable cropped timbers. Fantastic. All locally milled. Yes, and, and community response to the project? They love it. It's their building. They built it. So I guess that's good. <laughs> Incredible sense. Oh, excellent. Well, look, congratulations once again to you and obviously the Shire of Katanning as well for commissioning such an extraordinary project. And, uh, yes, enjoy the night. I probably don't need to say that to you again. <laughs> Not Katanning. Katanning's not for the right way. Don't give them credit. Come on. <laughs> See you later, guys. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>
House by Keen Architecture. House 12 Claremont by Deborah Brown Architect. Jubilee Crescent by Bannum Architects. Little River Residence by PTX Architects. North Perth House by Nick Brunston. Penryn Avenue by Clopper and Davis Architects. RZB House by Carrier and Posmus Architects. Swanbourne Street by Sorensen Architects. Torren Street House by Officer Woods Architects. And Trapezoid House by Lisa McGann. This jury was chaired by Philippa Mowbray and her fellow jurors were Mark Young, David Hartree, Oz Tim's Alan Parker and graduate guest juror Harriet Drummond. And the jury has awarded two commendations, two awards and the named award. The first commendation goes to Little River Residence by PTX Architects. The jury commends this seamless shift between positive and negative, with a minimalist dark form of Little River Residence acting as the contemporary opposite and continuation of its traditional and bright neighbour on the sprawling rural block. Congratulations PTX Architects. And a commendation also goes to Trapezoid House by Lisa McGann. Sculpted by its compactness and taking inspiration from the unique environment, the jury commends this project, which promotes connectivity with clever planning and provides generous outdoor spaces bathed in sunlight. Congratulations, Lisa McGann. The first award for Residential Architecture Houses New goes to RZB House by Carrier and Postmus Architects. In its second award this evening, the jury recognises this project for its finely crafted and sensitive response to the suburban setting. Beautifully detailed, fundamentally sustainable and innovative in its conception. Congratulations Carrier and Postmus Architects. And the second award goes to North Perth House by Nick Brunston. In its second award this evening, the jury commends this innovative and original response to a small residential site in North Perth, providing a new benchmark for small lot development. The jury also applauds the combination of innovation and design rigour, creating a result described as dramatic and surprising. Congratulations, Nick Brunston. And the Marshall Clifton Award for Residential Architecture Houses New goes to Floating House, Hansi Ellie's Residence by Architects Perrine. The floating house creates an immediate visual impression and reflects the architect's intention to produce a bold metaphorical composition where form becomes the fundamental structure. A pair of longitudinal volumes in stone presented as one on a compact area of land. Architects Perrine expanded the client brief to explore thinking about architecture and the way we live and the jury was captured by the originality of the forms, the attention to detail, and the skill in delivery of this intelligent project, a standout for residential design in 2020. Congratulations, Architects Perrine. And I am joined now by Jean-Mic Perrine. Welcome and congratulations. Well, Viv, uh, I'm absolutely thrilled. <laughs> <You know. laughs> such a wonderful lot of entries and uh, West Australia keeps producing great houses and I'm thrilled uh, oh. to get the award. Well it was a uh, very highly contested category you know we saw the number of commendations and awards given. Um, can you give us a little bit of background as to how this particular project came about? Well you know architects um, need patrons and uh, I think the word patron has gone out of fashion but really it in, a, in residential architecture, it's this aspiration towards a greater thing from our clients that actually pushes us, and certainly it pushes me. Um, and uh, Jeff Hansi and Yvonne Ellis are wonderful professional people who collect art and want to lift the spirit. And uh, once you're challenged with these things, you've really got to, you've really got to show your wares. <laughs> and I'm so thrilled to be, have been able to do it on such a small lot and you know 
And uh, this is the way that uh, small lot uh, architecture can actually outshine the big, you know, the big Mac Mansion stuff. Yep. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And what does it mean to, to you as a, a practice, Jean-Mic, to receive the highest honour in this particular category? Oh, look, it, it's this is a 38-year journey for me, um, working through urban design. Uh, I've always loved small lots and I've probably done, uh, you know, I've done buildings on 3.6 metres wide. <laughs> Well, <laughs> <laughs> of lot area, but this is the way to sustainable architecture. It's a, it's the way to urbanism without disrupting our neighbour and our, our neighbours and and really having perpetuity uh, to be able to continue the use of our urban areas over generations rather than singular use housing. Uh, this house particularly was designed to be two residences in the one house in the future, if at any time it should occur. And also it was designed to be able to change and adapt with, uh, with time. And all of, the great, all of the great precincts in the world are full of houses that we're now using as art galleries and studios and all sorts of things. But they have to have this honesty about them. And I'm thrilled to have uh, had Jeff and Yvonne as my clients to be able to, to bring this to life. Oh, well, that's absolutely wonderful. Do you know if they're watching the stream this evening, Jean-Mic? I, Jeff is, a, Jeff is always onto these things. He's one of the, one of the smartest people probably in the, in the city. And Yvonne is uh, very astute about these things as well. I wouldn't put it past them to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, if they are watching, congratulations on receiving this honour and commissioning such beautiful work. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say, Jean-Mic? Well, I think I'm going to take the job for, for Bill Hames and answer his phone as long as he pays in 15-year-old scotch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds like a challenge if ever I heard one. <laughs> Uh, well, look, thank you so much for joining us and congratulations once again on uh, a oh, terrific achievement. And, th and thanks to the architects uh, and, and the Institute for pushing on in such difficult circumstances. You guys have pioneered, I think, a winner of a format and I hope uh, you go on with it and, and uh, next year, even though things might be better. But this is a great format. Well done. Oh, well, thank you so much. And look, it is an absolute pleasure to be able to bring, you know, everyone's projects to a much broader audience this year. Uh, we seem to be getting a lot of viewers, which is terrific for all of the it members. It is terrific. Yeah. It is terrific. Great. Well, well done. Thank you. Wonderful. And congratulations. Thank um, you. And we will be back with the final rounds of announcements after these messages from the sponsors. The Built Environment Channel is a free streaming service specifically for built environment professionals. You'll receive a dedicated screen in your office on which we'll broadcast industry news, your own content and lots of design inspiration too. Temporary. Made for imagination. Made for style. Filbers made. Made for inspiration. The next category is Public Architecture, supported by the Institute's national corporate partner, Fielders. And we have this message from Chris Manger. Hi everyone, we're delighted to be joining you this evening. 
We hope that you're all keeping safe and healthy, and we're looking forward to meeting you in person next year. We're really proud to be supporting this category, and on behalf of Fielders, I want to wish all of the entrants the best of luck. And now, let's look at the Public Architecture nominees. Armadale Fitness Aquatic Centre by Donovan Payne Architects. Curtin Bicycle Hub by Coniglio Ainsworth Architects and Place Laboratory with Curtin University. Forest Chase Redevelopment by Haynes Charlie. Narogen Health Service by Silver Thomas Hanley. Onslow Health Service Redevelopment by Bateman Architects and Haynes Charlie. Pingerley Recreation and Cultural Centre by Iredale Pedersen Hook Architects with Advanced Timber Concept Studio. St Francis Chapel and Mausoleum by Slaven Architects. Swan Care New Leisure Precinct by Iredale Pedersen Hook Architects. And Wickham Community Hub by Gresley Abbas. This jury was chaired by Matthew Batchelor and his fellow jurors included Martin Asiata from Fielders, Stephen Smith and Su Fung Den. And they have awarded one commendation, one award and the named award. The commendation goes to, in its third accolade this evening, Swan Care New Leisure Precinct by Idel Pedersen Hook Architects. Through opening the site to the public, forming spaces for informal interaction and sensory stimulus, the insertions are commendable as a counterpoint to the notion of a typical village for the age. Congratulations once again to the team. The award for public architecture goes to Pingley Recreation and Cultural Centre by Idel Pedersen Hook Architects with Advanced Timber Concept Studio. Community engagement is evident in this project. It's precise sighting forming a gateway to the town's sports centre and framing a view to the community that surrounds it. Congratulations, Iredale Pedersen Hook Architects and Advanced Timber Concepts Studio. And the Geoffrey Howlett Award for Public Architecture goes to Curtin Bicycle Hub by Coniglio Ainsworth Architects and Place Laboratory with Curtin University. This freeform sculptural insertion extends the design beyond a simple response to brief. By embracing the roof as a usable fifth facade, a trafficable and sustainable green roof has been established, creating both visual impact from within the adjacent buildings and a universally accessible public space for gathering, learning, socialising and connecting. The Curtin Bicycle Hub acts as an informal public gathering space within an engaging campus precinct and is a respectful and sculptural counterpoint to its context. Congratulations, Coniglio Ainsworth Architects and Place Laboratory with Curtin University. And we have Andrew Ainsworth and team on the line, it looks like. Congratulations, guys. Yeah, thanks very much, guys. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, you deserve some applause. Um, now, this looks like an exceptional project. Can you tell us a little bit about how it's all come about? Um, the, the Curtin University guys are really keen to um, improve the particular part of the campus that, that, that the project cited in and wanted to make it a really fantastic activated space. And the bike hub is part of that project, um, but we've got to give acknowledgement to our counterparts here, um, Place Laboratory, who've been actually part of, I think, three projects that have been um, up for awards tonight, which is an amazing achievement by the place team, which I'd like to... Congratulations, place. Yeah, so, um, so a, a fabulous project, great client, um, amazing site. Yeah. Wonderful. And what do you love about projects of this kind of scale? Um, th this, this is a, a unique project in that sense in that um, it's, it's only quite a small project in, in a public setting, um, but, but part of a fantastic a campus that um, are really making some major moves in um, changing the nature of the campus to become a fabulous place for people. So um, a really great project in the mix of, of that whole, um, I guess, precinct. So. Wonderful. And is there anyone else that you'd like to acknowledge? I know that the PLACE team were integrally involved. Anyone else? Oh, of course, Curtin University. We're a wonderful client. Um, 
and a, a bit of a um, acknowledgement too to uh, Andy and Orion, who are um, I think over in the Eastern States, probably looking at this uh, uh, awards night. But um, uh, certainly, obviously, our team and the um, the subcontractors, the builder, fabulous team that work with us on the projects. So. Wonderful, and it's the highest honour in this category. Um, what does it mean to the practice, and I guess also to the client, to receive this kind of accolade? Um, I, th I think it's just recognition for um, really exciting uh, push to, to try and promote cycling in, in Perth, and uh, for the project to have even been recognised um, in uh, Europe and, and to be part of a bicycle biennial was a wonderful achievement. Um, great to sort of see that um, international exposure as well. So. Excellent. Great. Well, look, congratulations once again to you all. It looks like you've got a few drinks going there and you're, you're enjoying the night. So uh, <laughs> may the celebrations continue. <laughs> Thank you. And hi to Kate and Kim as well. <laughs> see ya. Thank you. And now the Colourbond Award for Steel Architecture, proudly supported by the Institute's principal partner, Blue Scope. For me, the pull of the Australian landscape is that it's got this beaten, weathered harshness, which is contrasted by these beautiful colours and soft matte surfaces. I love how a matte surface holds light, how it diffuses the light. It's absolute joy to photograph. It's like Colourbond steel matte. It's strong, enduring, yet subtle in its beauty. And we have this message from Ian Poe. Thanks, Viv. Hi, everyone. I'm Ian Toh, the Western Australia Specification Manager for Bluescope. It is great to be with you once again, celebrating architectural excellence in Western Australia. Previously, I spoke about the unprecedented amount of change we are all experiencing in the last few decades and how we as a species can adapt and embrace change. Just last year, I spoke about the power of the collective and the notion of the whole is greater than the sum of its part. I spoke to many of you recently at this current unprecedented situation continues to unfold. I'm truly inspired by your efforts in constantly adjusting and pivoting to these new conditions. At Blue Scope, we are seeing these challenges as stimulating the collective in fresh thinking and driving innovation make, to make us stronger. More importantly, this health crisis has shown us that we can come together as a collective to fight this war against an in invisible enemy that has sadly claimed countless lives around the world. Similarly, your aspiration on how your profession can collectively empower and improve the built environment and the society we all live in are important. Bluescope, as an Institute Principal Corporate Partner, has been on this journey with you in the last 35 years, championing clever and sustainable architecture. We at Bluescope take pride in supporting and assisting you, and we will continue doing so in the current environment. We are here virtually and always in spirit to celebrate yet another exciting year in architecture. We love to see both traditional and innovative ways our products are being used, with my fellow jurors, I have enjoyed seeing the diversity of the projects throughout the judging process, and I encourage you to submit your projects for consideration next year. On behalf of Blue Scope, I would like to wish all entrants good luck and to congratulate the winners. And now, let's take a look at the projects considered for this year's Colourbond Award for Steel Architecture. City Beach Residential College by Iredale Pedersen Hook Architects. Melville Senior High School Theatre by Cox Architecture. South Terrace Mezzanine House by Phillips Stead School Architecture. And Wickham Community Hub by Gresley Abbas. This jury was chaired by Mandy Leung and included Joe Chindazi, Mark Carroll and Ian and they have awarded one commendation and the Colourbond Award. The commendation goes to City Beach Residential College by Idel Pedersen Hook Architects. And the winner of the 2020 Colourbond Award for Steel Architecture is Wickham Community Hub by Gresley Abbas. Beneath the monochromatic corrugated skin lies a beautifully coloured core which becomes an oasis of life for this small Pilbara mining town, 
providing a softness and vibrancy not usually found within this frontier desert environment. The use of steel allowed the building to provide safety within its Category D cyclonic area efficiently, whilst providing a beautiful sculptural expression grounded within the landscape. Iron ore dug from the ground completes its long journey home. Congratulations, Gresley Abbas. And Phil Gresley joins me now. Congratulations, Phil. Thanks, Vivian. It's so very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like you have a massive gathering going on there. There's a lot of celebrating. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Look at this. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Well, I'm glad you've got a few people over to celebrate because you certainly deserve it. As you know, you are now representing the great state of Western Australia for the National Colour Bond Award with this project. How does that feel? That's pretty exciting. I mean, Steel has played such an instrumental role in the development of the concept of this project. So to have that recognised is fantastic. And um, looking at the jury citation, it looked as though there were several challenges that were inherent in the design of this project, not least the cyclonic conditions you had to contend with. Can you tell us a little bit about what it's like to design a community hub in an environment like that? Hello, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's quite a challenge. The climatic issues in Wickham and in the Pilbara are really significant. And again, steel is the material that allows us to uh, create and develop, you know, really interesting strategies to develop great uh, outcomes. It was good. It's great. Fantastic. And it looks as though it's been well embraced by the community, from what I understand. Can you tell us a little bit how, about how they've responded to the project? Oh, well, look, the city of Caratha and their community uh, in, in Wickham have been just fabulous in the development of this project. Uh, you know, I really need to thank Richard Goscombe, Reverend Richard Goscombe, as the person that brought together, you know, the community and, um, and brought alliance and, um, and a really strategic focus on achieving a fantastic result. Uh, also, um, Craig Boyce and uh, Simon Cott at the city of Caratha have just been fantastic in working with Mm -hmm. you know, and our, our internal team here at Gresley of us with uh, Alex Quinn and Ryan Dionka uh, and Tanya mm -hmm. Jones who has brought this together. It's been just fantastic. <laughs> and, uh, and Philippe and Matos who played a very big role in this. It's been terrific. So, you know, we're very excited by it. Thanks. Oh, well, look, that's absolutely Thanks, wonderful. Congratulations to the entire team and all the best with the potential win of the National Award later on in the year. Thanks very much, Ian. See Thank you later, you. guys. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>Congratulations once again, Gresley Abbas, and thanks to Ian and Bluescope for your long standing support, not only of this award, but also of the Institute of Architects. Thank you. And now for the final and the most prestigious award of the evening the George Temple Pool Award. And we have a message from the Honourable Peter Tinley, Minister for Housing, Fisheries, Veterans Issues and Asian Engagement. G'day, Peter Tinley, Minister for Housing in the McGowan Government. About this time last year, I had the pleasure of joining you for the 2019 Awards for Architects in Western Australia. We saw some great design, we saw some great nominations. Who would have thought 12 months later we'd be in the sort of circumstances we are? But COVID-19 has had a significant impact both in health terms, social terms and certainly economic. The McGowan government is committed to stimulus. Those same innovative, creative ideas that the, that the architect industry can produce for Western Australia are now needed more than ever. When you get the opportunity to participate in the projects that are coming, I urge you to think not just as the designer of a building, but think as a contributor of our society, as I know you do. We are looking forward to working with you. We're looking forward to some great design. This crisis won't hold us back. This will actually energise us to create the sort of livable community that we all talk about, you design and we aspire to. Now that's enough for me. Let's have a look at who are the nominees for the George Temple Pool Awards in 2020. Thanks. Reed House by Beth George Architect. 
125 Murray Street by Cox Architecture. Curtin University Midland Campus by Lyons with Silver Thomas Hanley. Aquinas College Chapel by John Taylor Architect. South Perth Foreshore Connect South Canopies by Iredale Pedersen Hook Architects with Blaise Laboratory and ETC. Floating House, Hansi Ellie's Residence by Architects Perrine. Verdant Apartments by MJA Studio. Curtin Bicycle Hub by Coniglio Ainsworth Architects and Place Laboratory with Curtin University. Pingley Recreation and Cultural Centre by Iredale Pedersen Hook Architects with Advanced Timber Concept Studio. And The Rocks Laneway by Taylor Robinson, Cheney Broderick with UDLA. Now, we don't have the actual award here with us this evening, but we do have these images. Um, the glass artist David Hay very kindly brought it into the chapter recently so that we could get these shots to give you an idea of what it looks like. It is an extraordinary piece of sculpture. So, without any further ado, the winner of the 2020 George Temple Pool Award is... Pingley Recreation and Cultural Centre by Iredale Pedersen Hook Architects with Advanced Timber Concept Studio. The jury consider this project to be an exemplar, demonstrating excellence in design and community impact. While the conceptual framework may be simple, the project demonstrates an outstandingly resourceful, sustainable design, exercising initiative well beyond the programmatic requirements of the brief. Using the highly seductive materiality of timber internally and externally, combined with exemplary technical execution, refined detailing, and a significant community development program centred around Pingley's long history of Aboriginal AFL players, the centre is contributing to the economy of the Wheatbelt community and long-term reconciliation. Congratulations, Iredale Pedersen Hook Architects with Advanced Timber Concepts Studio. And the team joined me for the third time this evening. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, look, absolute pleasure. Now, you had two projects in the running for the George Temple Pool Award. Um, are you surprised by this honour this evening? Yeah. <laughs> there was a bit of a pause. <laughs> Brewing for 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, look, how does it feel to receive the highest honour that can be bestowed at the WA Architecture Awards? <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Very pleased. Quite honoured. Honoured. <laughs> Probably that's the word, honestly. Yeah. You guys are lost for words. Um, well, can you tell us a little bit about, I guess, what it means to be acknowledged with an honour of this magnitude for this particular project? Look, I think this project's really important because it is the first large-scale civic timber building that's been put up in WA since 1942. And that last building was an aircraft hangar, aircraft stores hangar very different kind of thing to what we've been doing here. Uh, it's lean, it's kind of mean, and it's beautiful, we think. <laughs> um, it's very economical. The Shire, the, the, the guys down there love it, adopt it. As I said before, they, it's their building. We had nothing to do with it. So, um, you know, it's important for a whole range of reasons, I think. Mm. Um, well, the jury particularly noted um, its role in terms of what it's contributing to the community as well, sort of going beyond just being a structure. Are you able to sort of give us a bit of a sense of that from your point of view? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think in a way, country towns are really held together by the social network of not only the town itself, but the surrounding towns and the relationships between families. Often sport is the kind of core part of um, that relationship, and sometimes it's both competitive and friendly. So the whole of the kind of the Wheatfield area actually compete together on the sporting fields, both in summer and winter, through field sports and tennis and all the other sports. 
Um, it's also a melting pot from culture, from a Western um, colonial perspective for the non-Indigenous members of communities as well as the Indigenous members of communities. So with usually I think the um, the recreation centre wraps it around the Oval and the Oval is the kind of the, the melting pot and the meeting point of people from all walks of society, you know, traditional owners, you know, um, with Pingerley Tigers who are the first all Aboriginal football team in Australia. It's like this incredibly important historic moment. The whole sort of, um, the whole kind of uh, DNA and the whole kind of um, tree of, um, of, of football comes from Pingerley. You could trace Nicky Winmay you can trace um, the Bernals back to Pingerley. It's an incredible point from football in Australia. And in a way, this, this heart of the community and the heart of the wheat belt is these sporting fields. And really the building just provides um, a backdrop for those kind of social events and those activities. Oh. Well, fantastic team. Um, an absolutely extraordinary achievement this evening and a beautiful, beautiful project. So congratulations once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>